Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly update. This is going to be a pretty long one, got a lot of things to cover because last week's weekly update wasn't so weekly. But there was a good reason for that. I started up the first test, so I had a whole lot of feedback to go through, a lot of things to fix. So I figured I would just save it all for this week, and we've got a lot. But first, before we get started, let me just give a quick thanks to all of my testers here. We've got Alex, DJ Fakey, Guy, Leo, Lunar, Six, Bruin, Transistor, Muty, and Tetragonia. So thank you very much, everybody, for helping with the test there. Special thanks to everybody who filled out the survey at the end as well to um, log bugs and your system requirements, because that helped a lot. And an even more special, special thanks for everybody who was able to test on multiple systems. That was also very helpful. So thank you very much, everybody. Now to get into the actual patch here. First off, added a blink. So we have a dash in the game already. And the main reason for that is that I want to be able to add, I want to have a gap close option or an escape option for melee so that the melee weapon will actually stay kind of at least somewhat relevant throughout the game. The melee weapon has a bleed and panic effect on enemies that you hit with it, so I wanted to be able to add the option to gap close, hit with the melee weapon, and then run out, or if someone's really close, hit them with the melee weapon and then escape to somewhere safe. Uh, so the good thing about the dash is that it's multi-directional, so that makes it really versatile. The problem with it is that it can be a little hard to judge exactly where you're going to end up. So I added a blink, which is essentially just a teleport. If you've ever played Dishonored, then it's a lot like that. And it has the advantage of giving you a preview to see exactly where you'll end up. But uh, it also has the drawback of only being one directional. So it's I'm really trying to figure out which one of those I want to keep. Test results on that were pretty well split. Uh, some people liked the blink, some people liked the dash, and some people even said they didn't really see a need for either. So I'm going to keep on working on that, and we'll figure that one out later. But then, of course, whenever you add a feature, you immediately have to start bug fixing it. So fixed bugs with the blink, mostly that involved being able to clip through the floor by teleporting nonstop into it. <laughs> fix that so you can't do that any more than I'm aware of but there are already some other issues like being able to uh, force your way through some walls and most of the time you just fall through the map so uh, I need to figure some of that stuff out still but uh, I, I want to I've been holding off on that because I'm still not sure if I'm going to use the blink or just stick with the dash but we'll see Brightness option added, so now you are able to change your gamma. That's useful. <coughs> uh, first test build, that went out. And then now we're getting into actual fixes that we got during the test. Secret wall fixes. We were having an issue where between saves, the secret walls, basically movable walls, those would reset in size and would also have some areas just not work anymore like they're the boxes that would trigger them the collision boxes would actually change location as well so got that fixed so now saves their location saves the uh, any custom locations for the collision box for activating them and they also just will maintain their shape so they work just fine now uh, various menu fixes were done uh, there, there were some weird things that would happen when the game would unpause. Because some things don't really take effect until the game is unpaused. So to try to show the effect more immediately, I would unpause the game but set the time scale to zero. So the game was technically unpaused. Like code could still run, but it was also just. Really, it was still paused. <laughs> uh, that wound up causing some issues. So I worked around that for some things and uh, just had to fix some other things and figure out a different way to, of doing them. 
but we got that fix in. Uh, E1M2 fixes, those were mostly things like geometry not lining up exactly, and uh, some decals were a little too fat, so they were going through walls. Disabled mouse smoothing, that was a very nice one to find. Unfortunately, I only found it after the testing was uh, taking place, so I couldn't fix it for the test build. But it's disabled now, so now the mouse is much more responsive. So it cut down a lot on input lag there. Fix the FOV. We found there were some issues where the FOV would uh, essentially reset, and now it doesn't. Resolution fix. The resolution issues were pretty bad. <laughs> they were probably the biggest technical issue that I had during the test. Uh, it turned out the game would only actually work in borderless full screen. I had originally thought that the full screen and windowed options just didn't play well with the editor. So testing in the editor, they just didn't work right. Uh, no, it turns out that they actually are completely functional in the editor, they just didn't work in my game. So uh, I went in and I got them fixed. Essentially what would happen is if you switched the game to anything other than borderless full screen, if you switched to full screen, then your screen would just go black. Uh, if you switched to windowed, then your game would disappear. And the issue with that happened to be with the menu where you would uh, select a drop down you set your resolution well first off it wouldn't set a resolution uh, when you would change the modes and second when you would try to change the resolution it would feed the information in wrong so it would display like 1920 x 1080 and it was supposed to remove the space x space from that and then split it so it would have 1980 for one number and then 1080 for another and then feed that into a resolution set so that you could get 1920 and 1080 for your different values and then it would set that the problem was that it wasn't doing that correctly and it was just feeding junk into the resolution set so uh it just defaulted to setting your resolution to one by one which really does not play well in full screen and if you do that with a window then Technically, your game is still there, but it's just one pixel. So, that doesn't, that didn't exactly play too well. I uh, got that fixed now, and you can change your window type and your resolution, and it all works just fine. <laughs> Secret fix. Uh, there was an issue with the secrets where <clears throat> sometimes people couldn't trigger them at all, and then it, uh, if you would save the game and then load back to it, then it, the secrets just didn't work at all anymore. And the issue wound up being that a do once node was in the wrong spot. Essentially, it would run a check for an overlap for a collision box. So you would overlap the collision box, and then it would run the code once that to check that the play, if it was the player that triggered the uh, overlap, then it would do all the code, like, you know, play the sound effect, display the message that you found a secret, and then do the code of having found one secret, and then it would delete the, the actor. But the problem was that it would, <laughs> I had do once at the front, which meant that it would do that check to see if it was the player once, and then everything else after that. And if it was not the player who overlapped it, well then it that that was its one shot it's one shot so yeah so that got fixed it took me way longer to realize what the issue was there but it got fixed in the end so now players <laughs> players can trigger it once anything else can trigger it however many times but if they're not the player it's not going to do it. Next, we've got the save menu change. That was a big quality of life change, more so than anything else. The way that it worked before was you had multiple slots. You'd click on it, type in a save name, hit enter, and then it would save. The problem with that was that it was a little hard to tell exactly when your game would save because 
it would technically save on uh, text on text accepted, which meant that if you clicked off of it as well, then it would save. And it wasn't exactly clear when it was saving. So uh, that also had the issue of not being able to cancel a save in case you accidentally clicked on the wrong one. So now you click on a slot, it brings up a confirmation box with the name on it. You type in the name and you are either able to cancel so that it will just revert everything back and it won't overwrite your save or you can just click save and very obviously save. So it's much better now. E1M2 performance increase. You remember from a previous devlog, we had some fire effects that were having my frame rate in the first level. And I did not remember that I actually had one of those in E1M2. It wasn't fire, but it was from the same pack and so, it was destroying people's frame rate. So I got rid of that and that was a already, just from getting rid of one was a huge performance increase. So it's much better now. Enemies can now walk through doorways. There's some weird things that seem like they would be very hard to do that wind up being really easy. Most of the time it's the other way around where with game development it seems like Everything should be easy until you start trying to implement it, and then it winds up being way harder. Uh, <laughs> there's also this kind of misconception that some things are just, you click a button, and then it just does what you want it to. That is basically never the case, except for this time. So what we were running into was you would open a door, run through it. If you're getting chased by an enemy, they would try to chase you through and then they would just stop at the doorway and get stuck. What was happening there was there was basically a gap in the nav mesh. And for people who don't know, a nav mesh is essentially just mapping out. You basically just throw a blanket on the floor and say, anywhere that this blanket is, the uh, AI can walk on it and it will not go over walls or anything and what happens is when you have a doorway it will treat that as a wall so you wind up with these gaps in the nav mesh you open the door but there's still the gap there so the enemy doesn't know that it can walk through there and i was prepared for this to be a multi-day fix and potentially have to rewrite some of the, the code with the behavior trees Fortunately, Unreal actually just has an option called Dynamic Nav Mesh that whenever the geometry changes, it will recalculate the nav mesh in that area and it will update it. So now you open a door and it fills in the gap. So it works just fine now. Now we've got... Uh, <laughs> This is probably about as patch noty as my patch notes have sounded so far. Elevator button collision no longer blocks bullets. That's basically what it sounds like. The the collision box for the elevator buttons, you know, the, the, basically, you have to have a collision box to for anything that you interact with to see if you are close enough to be able to interact with it. So... There's a box that's just invisible in front of the buttons. You overlap them, and then you're telling, the, which tells the game that you are close enough to be able to press the button. That button is basically just supposed to exist for for that overlap check. Uh, but it turned out that it was actually blocking bullets, so they don't do that anymore. <laughs> Next, fixed blood decals going through floors. If you would jib an enemy on the second floor, then it, it would spawn a blood pool underneath them. You go to the first floor and you look up and then you suddenly see that there's blood coming through the ceiling. <laughs> so uh, basically what, what was happening there was the decal was just too fat, so I thinned it down and now it no longer just clips through floors. Next, got fixed E1M2 boundary breaks. That was just... There were some areas where you could uh, squeeze around something that was supposed to be blocking an exit in the level. So those are fixed. So you can't do that anymore. 
Fixed seizure mode on fire damage. Fire damage would uh, proc the little red flash around the edges of your screen way too often. Uh, usually in games when you take damage, you'll get a little red uh, vignette around your screen just to let you know that you took damage. Uh, yeah, it, you take damage pretty often from fire in my game. And so it would it would flash it a lot. <laughs> so I clamped that so that it can only happen every so often now. And so it it's st you still know you're on fire because it's still faster than most other things can damage you, but uh, you're not going to have a seizure anymore. So fix that. Uh fixed switching weapons mid shooting. That's basically what it sounds like. You could uh switch weapons while you were shooting them so that's fixed but there were some other issues that came along with that we'll talk about that really soon now can restart level after death basically like with doom if you would die and then click the mouse button then you would restart the level with all your guns gone but full health and a, a pistol so uh, that's basically what it is now. It's like we technically have a hook start, but uh, I'm not really planning on not having a pistol available for in most levels. <laughs> uh, it'll essentially be a pistol start. Fixed absurdly obscure IE debug. <laughs> when I say absurdly obscure, I kind of mean it. Uh, this was a bug that I had to work quite a bit to fix. And every time I would fix it a little bit more, it would break just a little bit more as well. What in, so the IED's usual behavior would be you throw one out, then you click the detonator and it blows up. And what was happening was you were able to, you're able to hold down the mouse button to generate more strength on the throw to throw it farther. What would happen is you would throw it, flick the detonator, it would blow up, and if you held down the mouse button, then let go, then you would throw another one out. So, so that meant, meant that it was already charging the next throw if you were holding down the mouse button. So I fixed that, but then wound up with an issue where if you were out of ammo, you still have the detonator out so that you can just click it and play around with it. It's, <laughs> it's something that's just kind of stupid, but it's a little detail that it was weirdly dedicated to. <laughs> so uh, if you were out of ammo and you were just clicking the IED detonator and then you held it down and then you picked up an IED, then you let go of the, the clicker, then You'd throw one out. So fix that. <clears throat> and then that led to one of the more complicated fixes for a very niche bug where if you were out of ammo with the IED, switched off of it, then switched back to it to have the just the detonator out, and you started clicking it, and then you held it down, and then you walked over in IED and picked one up. Then you let go of the button and he'd throw one out. So that is essentially an issue that would only happen in extraordinarily rare circumstances or if you already knew about it and were just intentionally trying to do it. Uh, nevertheless, I fixed it. So now the IED works as it should and you can... Just click away with the detonator afterwards, however much you want. So have fun with that. Now, added delay at the start of melee attacks. This is for enemies. What was happening was when enemies would start up the, well, melee enemies, when they would start up their melee attack, they would, you know, they would rear back and then swing. But what was happening was as soon as they got the call to attack, you would take damage. First frame. So it was, 
it was kind of a fake telegraph and it was a little hard to dodge but uh so what happened was i would just go in add a delay and now i have it set to where enemies can have custom melee enemies can have custom delays on their attacks so that i can work in differing kinds of telegraphs or could even add in a random amount of time in a range uh, for a telegraph so uh, that should be interesting but now you actually take damage when it shows the swing go through which means that there's a little bit of a telegraph so there's a window where you can dodge which makes the dash a lot more useful too Fixed melee enemies launching you in the air. Yeah, uh, so I added a knockback on uh, basically every kind of attack that you take. Just every enemy has a certain amount of knockback that they add. Melee enemies during the test were the only ones where it was implemented. What was happening, though, was when you're on the ground and they hit you, you know, it'd knock you back some. It was an all right amount. <clears throat> but if you jumped in the air when they hit you, then they would launch you quite a ways up. And so then people found, of course, a way to stack like three melee enemies together, then jump over them, and then get hit three times and get launched just clear out of the map. <laughs> <laughs> I know the the testers had a lot of fun with that one, trying to f see like how high they could go up. But uh, the reason why that was happening was because uh, the melee enemies, their knockback was actually set as high as an explosive crate. So uh, I went in and I fixed that to where it's a much more acceptable amount. You still get popped up in the air a little bit, but... You know, I'll, I'll leave that little bit of fun in there. Why not? I don't see any particular reason why that needs to be <laughs> completely removed. Uh, fixed enemy death animations. There was an issue with death animations for enemies where they would sometimes be instant and then sometimes play out as they should. And uh, that was a, a kind of a... It was kind of the result of code executing a little too fast. So sometimes it would execute too fast. Sometimes it would execute at, at the correct pace, or like the pace that it was designed for. And uh, basically what, what it was doing is it had a call to get the duration of the flip book, so to get the duration of the animation for the enemy dying, and then set a delay to that duration. But the problem was, uh, sometimes it would get the flip book as it was changing, which meant that it would potentially get a, you know, it, it would be the difference of uh, maybe a third of a second versus potentially zero, I guess. So sometimes it would just be instant, and then sometimes it would play it through correctly. Now I added in a manual delay that you set, that I, I can set for the enemy type based off of their actual animation. So now I'm able to manually enter in the delay that there needs to be. So now they play correctly. Fixed jibbing frame loss. This was a big one that people noticed when they would have the shotgun and they would jib an enemy suddenly their frame rate would tank. And essentially what happens when you jib an enemy is it will spawn uh, little chunks of meat or whatever, and every time they hit something or overlap with something, it will do a uh, blood spray effect on it. So the intent is that if they hit a wall or hit the ceiling or hit the floor, then they'll splatter, and then uh, they'll, they have a max of two pounds. I think it depends. And uh, I'm going to redo the jibs anyway. So. And he, anyway, they would hit something and it would spray blood out. But what was happening was they weren't set to ignore the enemy that they were spawning from. So they would, you'd kill the enemy and you'd have you know, a, a 
a random amount between something like three or three and five of those chunks that would all spawn inside of the enemy get stuck overlap with each other and so suddenly you would have all these generated events where it's just spraying blood everywhere and the chunks have nowhere to go until the enemy's uh, hitbox got lowered actually it got removed from from being dead so then they would go flying out like they were supposed to but you would have this massive frame drop so now they're set to ignore each other and ignore the enemy that they're spawning from so now they spawn correctly and there's no frame updated system requirements <laughs> this was big thanks to all the testers Got a much more acceptable uh, system requirement setting on the uh, Steam page now. Uh, it's still not not great for the type of game that it is. It's it, it's really something with Unreal Five, where I I believe, as far as I know, Unreal Five is just kind of a naturally more demanding engine, and so you're. You're kind of limited on on your performance, mostly to where it's it seems like lower systems, like lo lower spec systems, can actually get more frames. They can actually perform way better. There, there's a lot more headroom there with uh, graphic settings, whereas higher spec uh, computers seem to almost underperform but they all perform kind of like in the same range. So it's a little strange. Um, the, the frame rates weren't really bad. They just weren't as high as you would expect for a, a game like this. So uh, still doing a lot of optimization there and looking for how I can help the game out a little bit more. I've already found some things since the test so that now the game's running a, a little bit better as well. And I'm going back and I'm trying to be a little bit more efficient with certain things. But really, I think uh, kind of one of, the, one, of the, one of the things about this game is just running on Unreal 5 has a naturally higher requirement, which kind of flattens your uh, frame rate out. I had plenty of people that were still frame locked at 144. Uh, and then... Uh, plenty of people with <clears throat> low spec computers would set the game to low settings and low settings don't really look significantly different it's mostly just post-processing effects that get changed and uh, shadow distance but uh, they would drop the settings to low and then they would suddenly get you know like 30 extra frames from it so uh, it, it's kind of a weird topic <laughs> but you know uh, performance overall seems fine uh next uh fix saving while crouching yeah i i didn't have it save if you were crouched or not uh, during a save and load so what would happen sometimes is if you were crouched under something that was you know, that was really low that you couldn't stand under normally then you would spawn in standing and you would get clipped through a wall or something or just like fly out the map. So that's fixed now. E1 M1 updates, a lot of visual updates for it and also uh, some layout updates too. So it is, I'm, I'm liking the look of it much better and it is, it feels a lot less open and empty. So. Still got to work on that some, and also I'm working on that more for E1M2 as well. Just trying to fill out the maps a little bit, get more sprites made, and just make it look better. And fixed enemies being deaf. This was really the last issue that people reported with the test, and the issue was that uh, enemies are supposed to be able to hear, <laughs> but they weren't, so... You could walk up and if someone was facing a wall or was just not facing you and you start shooting people, the people who saw you, they, they would engage like they're supposed to, but the other people would just stand there staring at a wall or whatever. 
and not really notice you until they turned around. So uh, figured out the issue for that was that they were set to detect enemies. But as far as I'm aware, I guess there's not, there wasn't anything that was telling them that the player is an enemy. So I set them to just detect everything. And once that happened, then they all work just fine. And finally, enemies can now walk around one another. Ran into a problem where melee enemies in particular would kind of just stack up on each other when they were trying to get to the player. They couldn't really see one another that well. Uh, change that so that now enemies will all just walk around each other. Which is really nice. Still running into some uh, moments where pistolers or shotgunners will just mow people down trying to shoot you, but I don't know. Um, that's going to be a test, uh, a little point of testing for later to see if people think it's too often or too exploitable. Or personally, I think, you know, other games do that all the time, you know, Doom and Blood. You, you can definitely arrange characters to kill each other in those games, Doom especially. But uh, usually it's not really that big of an issue because you're going to be taking damage. You're trying to uh, lure people all around to get shot. So uh, it doesn't seem to be too big of an issue right now. And I think right now... With the melee enemies being able to move around each other and people not getting stuck as often, it makes it much better now to where it's not it's not as much of a problem. So anyway, that is all we've got now. Yes, that's that's all. <laughs> that was a, a bit of a long one, but it was two weeks worth and there were a lot of fixes to make, but now the game is in a much, much better state than it was. So I'm uh, feeling pretty good about it now. now. There's still a lot of things to work on, still things that I want to change with some menus potentially, but for now I'm feeling pretty good about how it's going. So uh, looking forward to actually the next test. Whenever that starts up, probably going to be once I get, I want to say maybe another two maps in, maybe another three. I have been saying I'm going to work on E1M3 for quite a while, but we might actually be able to get there this week if I'm not too busy filling out E1M1 and E1M2. Those are the main things I'm working on right now. But hopefully we'll be able to actually get started on the third map. But that'll be for next week. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you guys next week. Have a good one, everyone.